Hold on. <laughs> so, well, tell me who you are. Uh, I'm uh, Om Prakash. I'm director of Water Zoom, and yeah. uh, this is uh, this work is under Water Zoom. You speak up a bit because we're out, outside. Yeah. So. yeah. And these pictures are from Delhi. They are very recent photographs, just one week old photographs. And just so, one week. Yeah, one week old photographs. I was in Delhi before coming to this place. I had to rush for public, uh, just uh, for this uh, exhibition. Yeah. And uh, I have got a lot of photographs from Delhi, but since there was a limitation of a space. So Sunita, uh, well, I'm here with so I'm here with Sunita from Argiam as yeah, yeah. well. Yeah, that's great. You said how many photos have I've you? I've got 74,000 photographs now from 15 states of India, uh, picturizing rural, urban, both the sectors. And you've been doing this for many years now. I have been covering since last 10 years. 10 years. 10 years, and. Uh, uh, we are in the process of now classifying the photographs and maybe in a couple of months we'll be coming up with website. Yeah. So talk us, talk us through some of the photos and Sunita, yes. let, let talk, talk yeah. you know, yeah. I'd be interested in your views and on see, some of this uh, as well. Uh, this, uh, the girls, they're taking for water, basically they're utilizing water and they're taking from the leakage and you can very well imagine that what uh, amount of time it must be taking. So they miss the schools because the parents go out to work, so ultimately they are responsible for collecting the water. Hold on, I'll just have a... Yeah. So, so where is this? This is New Delhi. It's in uh, very near to uh, the um, uh, like water supply um, pumping house, you can say. This is an important picture, Mark, because there is a lot of discussion from the government's point of view. This counts as leakage. Yeah. And they, this is non-revenue water because yeah. they are taking bulk water into the city and giving it to people with connections, right, who have proper regular connections. This is considered as a leakage, but it's not. It's yeah. people who are taking water to drink because they don't get they're water otherwise. So, yeah. so th there is, there is a, a disconnect here between the way something like this is portrayed as non-revenue water or leakage from the yeah. utilities point of view to where the citizens see it as you know their only source of lifeline water. Yeah. Yeah. Situation like this when the tanker comes because they don't have other alternative source so they have to depend on safe drinking water on the tanker and we, d we cannot attest the authenticity of the water quality of this tanker as well. But Hold on, I'll just have a look. Yeah. So describe, the, describe what's happening here. It's just a rush to get even a, 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 like a bucket of water for maybe for a whole day. Yeah. Drinking water, safe drinking water. But how can we attest the quality of this tanker? We can't, uh, we are not so, sure about so it. What happens in many areas when they're in the government, government itself organizes these tankers when they're not able to provide regular water on days where for some reason there's a water supply disruption, then they organize tankers to that area. Or in the summer months, when there is no water flowing down the pipes, they send the tankers. But then that results, you know, in scenes like this, obviously, because this is the only source of water yeah. coming to the people in that area. There's a regular conflict, violence, hot arguments. So the neighbors, they keep fighting over the issue of water. Yeah. Not over the issue of uh, livelihood or food, but water. And similarly, we can see that they cannot even put the label rightly, so we can very well understand the quality of water. <laughs> these are the these are destined to be sold in market, but see, even the labels are not put in the right kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we so can, it's it's just yeah. What confidence are you going to have? Yeah. You can't even label things. Yeah. So and well. they are going to sell it in the market. Yeah. So water business is booming. And similarly, see. Here in this photograph, I have raised the question of gender sensitivity. Yeah. We say there is a gender water need, so it should be classified. But here, is this a standpoint, public standpoint, gender sensitive? Uh, a lady is taking bath here, over her a man, surrounded by man, and then the lady is here. So it's just might is right. Mike is right. Yeah. This, this is powerful stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And I can't help but think that you using these photographs when you're talking about problems is very powerful. Or how, in a way, your photographs could pr can prompt stories as well from your side. Do, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because it's largely a case of 
awareness building and advocacy, right? The whole, the whole dealing with the issues in water, large part of it is about bringing it into the spotlight, bringing issues into the spotlight and raising public awareness, awareness of the elected representatives, the parliamentarians and everybody on what are the crucial issues. And a, a photo is a thousand words, right? Remember we were talking about the power of the photograph. Yeah, yeah. I was talking you know, to Sunita about, about why these photographs yeah. How they, how you can generate meaning through a photograph? Yeah, because photographs, you know, I, I have been handed <laughs> over this of uh, leaflets and books by World Bank Authority, saying that we have covered and Delhi is full of water. Delhi is 100% covered from the perspective of sanitation. But I just call him that I will change your perspective in five minutes 